So what are what are your process? Because I mean you you are probably the most expert, foremost expert when it comes to Game of Thrones. I mean I've looked at other people online, but they're not as thorough, they're not in depth as in depth and plus they're not as accurate. <laughs> right. Um well, so, I mean, the way I do it, like the angle I took with my channel was to focus on the filming news, right? So um, that I realized early on that that's what was getting me the most views. So I just like doubled down on that. And I've basically just been making videos on that specifically. It's my sleuthing series. So people like to call me a sleuth because I just gather all of these filming news Anything that you hear from the sets or any leaks from legitimate sources. Um, I should mention no leaked plots. I don't like reading leaked plots because that really influences my predictions. But I like to just get hints here and there and that. And I put them all together to create predictions, right? Based on, on those hints, which is uh, a lot of fun, really. Yeah. And, and with that being said, like, how, how are you able to legitimize the sources that you're getting? Like, yeah, the filming news and everything, but I know sometimes you'll use like leaked photos and you, you seem to be very careful with, you know, hey, you know, this is a leaked photo. This is what's going on. And because of previous experience with, um, you know, what we've seen from other episodes with that director, it brings me to believe that this is possibly what's going on. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, the, uh, there's really never, um, 100% guarantee that a source is legitimate. Like we've had the most legitimate source out there is uh, Watchers on the Wall, which is uh, Game of yes. Thrones only blog. And they're very trustworthy and they still get some things wrong. I remember from season six, I believe, um, some things that I did some sleuthing on that didn't actually pan out in the end. So you never really know. Okay. But uh, but yes, from experience, you do kind of um, get a better idea and you know to not believe everything. And also Reddit is a really good source and Reddit, they, they're really good at like weeding out the fake ones there. So that helps as well. So what is, um, so this is my question. What do you think? And maybe you've already talked about this. I haven't watched your last couple videos, but what do you think is going on at the wall? Do you think, Everybody died. I mean, this is spoilers, right? Like, maybe not everybody's seen season seven, but you had the wall where the Night King is riding, you know, the resurrected dragon and he's tearing down the wall, right? And mm -hmm. we see it just falling on everybody, even main characters. And we, we know that they like killing main characters, but do you think yeah. that that happened or do you think they're still alive? Like, what, what's your thoughts on that? Well, for something like that, um, I use both like, logic from the storyline and the show and foreshadowing and also filming news uh, hints. And so specifically for the wall, we have Beric and Tormund there. Actually, a lot of people thought that Gendry was still there, but there was a deleted scene of him being on the boat with John and Danny, so he's not there, so it's only Beric and Tormund. But yes, um, I don't think that they're going to kill them because first of all, Beric still has um, to fulfill his purpose. Um, he's, that's been heavily foreshadowed that he's alive for a reason and we haven't seen that reason yet and it's not, it wasn't to, to help John capture a white because even though there was a big event Eric didn't make any difference you know, like he could have just not gone and everything would have gone the same way so that was obviously not the reason so he still needs to do something other than that and then Torment, well uh, <laughs> I think he might be, I mean, I do have an idea of something that he might um, have a reason for to stay alive in the future. And that but, is, come on, share it with us. Well, what, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> it's a, um, well, it's something that I really want to see. Um, and it's tied to uh, Viserion turning into a white dragon um, or a white walker dragon. No one really knows if he's a white walker or white, but anyway, technicalities. Um, I really, really want to see Viserion react to Danny, you know, because they, they should still have a very strong connection, even though Viserion is not his, you know, former self anymore. It would be amazing to see Danny try to interact with Viserion and, uh, and have a reaction there. You have Viserion, you know, maybe, uh, stop 
the what the Night King is on him to do. But um, I think it would be cool to see a setup for that before we actually get that scene. And the setup for that could be having Tormund turned into a white, oh, wow. and then yeah, and then run into Brienne, and mm. then have him react to Brienne because we know that Brienne. He's going to be fighting against whites, and uh, if we see Tormund turning into a white, I think that would be a really cool type of setup for wow. Danny and Sarah later on. I don't know. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> but but he, he he really he really likes her a lot. I mean, there's tons of flirting every time they meet, which I think yeah. is a, is actually yeah. one of my my favorite um, go between between characters is them. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Uh, but it, it it seems like she has a thing for Jamie. You know. Yeah. Exactly. And so I think there's going to be a payoff to that, like Tormund and Brienne interaction there. There's, so that's another reason, again, to keep Tormund alive or maybe to have Tormund be a white and run into Brienne. But yeah, Brienne is going to be with Jamie. We know this um, from filming news and we also we can easily guess this because Jamie's heading up north. So yeah. Well, that is a speculation, right? Because uh, Cersei is, uh, you know, whatever she could do to get on that throne. Doesn't matter mm-hmm. what it is, you know. Even using wildfire, as we've seen, she does not care. All it amounts to is being on the throne, right? So yes, I was. You know, we, we knew that Jamie eventually was just going to say, "You know what? I, I can't do this anymore. I'm done." You know. So what do you what do you think is going to happen with um, you know, the the news of John? being a Targaryen because we it left off with Bran right um revealing this you know yes. so what what do you think the payoff there is going to be and it, is it going to be something that we're going to see in the first episode or you think it's going to leave that alone until maybe a second or third episode and, and kind of the add to that like how do you think he'll react specifically <laughs> yeah that's a that's a really good question um I think they're going to make us wait a little bit um from what I'm used to, Game of Thrones likes to, you know, just continue to to push it back and back, right? Um, so I'm not. I'm thinking we won't see anything happening in episode one. Uh, the way I kind of see it happening was um, Sam would be the one to tell John, and then Bran would be in the same room and tell him it's too late. She's <laughs> pregnant. Because like the first thing, the first thing that she's <laughs> that they're going to see is that they're together, right? And so yes. like, you know, they're gonna be like, well, shit. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, we are kind of late in uh, giving him the news, but I think John, how he will react. I mean, he's just he's gotta believe Bran, right? I mean, he would trust him. Of so, course, yeah. um, he's never wanted. To be king, that's that's the pattern with John. He's always been given that position. He's never actually asked for served. it or yeah. yeah. Um, so it would be, and he's always wanted to be a Stark as well. So that's really going to mess with him. Um, I, well, I he, mean, I, he's technically a Stark, right? Because uh, Lyanna, right? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, he is technically a Stark, but he's he's a Targaryen because his father, right? So I mean, you know, I, I, yes, the father is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he would be a Targaryen before he would be a Stark. Uh, but I think, I mean, he would want, I think, even though he would know that he's Aegon Targaryen, I don't think that he would go to King's Landing and be like, okay, I am Aegon Targaryen. I deserve this throne. You know, that's, <laughs> that's just not John. I feel like John would give it to Daenerys still. He would tell her, like, hey, just, you can have it. I don't want it. Um, and then potentially we'll see if John ends up as king, it's going to be because the people chose him. It's not going to be because he wanted to, to be there. You know? True, just like what we saw when uh, he came back to the north, right? Mm-hmm. And of mm-hmm. course, they made him that, you know, the famous saying, King of the North, they, you know, bestowed upon him instead of Sansa, mm-hmm. which you could. I honestly thought when that happened, I thought that yeah. Littlefinger was actually going to be able to manipulate her and use that. To get mm-hmm. her to do something to John, and I was surprised the way it all worked out. What What did you think about that? Yeah, that was a weird storyline last season. It was really confusing. Um, you never really knew if Arya was just playing or or faking it, or if she was actually angry with, with Sansa. 
Um, there were a lot of hints to Sansa, um, you know, betraying John in some way. And a lot of people think that we will see that play out in season eight. But when you think about it, we've already seen that in season seven not working out, as you just said. And Sansa has made it clear that, you know, Arya would kill her if she did anything <laughs> to John. So I honestly, I don't see Sansa betraying John at this point. Um, okay. But yeah, but she is going to be upset that he bent the knee. I mean, we did see a little bit of that in season seven. And, yeah, uh, of course. Yeah, but uh, from what I've seen in interviews with a production team and stuff like that, the there's going to be a lot of drama at Winterfell, of course, but Danny is going to again earn the love of the people, right? Like she, Sansa's not going to like her at first, but then she's going to be okay with her later on. It seems that's what they were hinting at. So I, I definitely and, and harken back to what you were talking about with hopefully we see an interaction with her. And her dragon, who became a White Walker, if you will, um, mm. it'd be interesting to see because even though magic is talked about, I, I thought that we would see magic more in mm -hmm. the series. Um, I did read some of the books, and it it seemed, at least in my imagination, that there was a lot more magic within the books than there is within the series, and so that kind of that kind of bothered me a little bit. But what what do you think? Are we, we going to see? more magic this uh this season being is the finale you know and or what what are your thoughts on that i think well brand's magic is going to be huge in season eight mm -hmm. i really think that and uh there's hmm, there's going to be yeah we'll we'll probably see a lot of uh the uh red the, the red priests mm -hmm. magic I do believe that Melisandre is going to come back from Volantis with uh, some sort of knowledge or with other priests or something like that. And we will see some sort of magic there used against the Night King. Um, but I think that will be the extent of it. So it will be the Red Priests, then the Night King's magic, and then Bran's magic or powers of like working into others and controlling the future and, and present and past and all these <laughs> things. So, yeah. And, and you know, it's there's all these different fan theories as far as who Bran is or has become and everything. You know, when I like the the one it was a couple seasons back, if I'm not mistaken, but with Hordor, for example, when we realize why he was always saying that, right? Yeah. Which was which was um, definitely heartfelt. Like, it really touched the heartstrings. Like, wow, that's <laughs> and he he knew this whole time and still still went along with everything, right? Um, yeah. So what would, you know, is, is Bran the Night King or, you know, who, who is Bran really? You know, we see him here now as a boy, you know, young man now, if you will. But what fan theories do you uh, subscribe to? Which ones do you think have a better probability of being true? Uh, well, actually, I'm really glad you asked this question because there is one Bran theory that I am absolutely in love with. This uh, this guy, I can't remember the name of the blog. Um, I will give it to you if you have some sources there. But um, he just put everything together so perfectly for Bran. And we have heard, I can't remember who exactly said it, but we have heard that in um, the, the ending of the show or the ending of the books is in the first episode of Game of Thrones. Really? Or in the first chapter. Yeah. Wow. Like, if you, you can interpret that chapter in the proper way, you can figure out the ending. And this guy did it. And it has to do with Bran. Wow. And basically, Bran is um, the Lord of Light. You know, that is the whole theory. Wow. And I, I think it's great. I think it's excellent. It really fits in. Um, he's the one that's been sending messages through fire to everyone. Uh, he's the one who's been controlling everyone's dreams and all that. And... Um, like the past, like, you know, how the, the Mad King was repeating over and over, burn them all. That might have been like a sort of like a hood or thing. Um, where yeah, Bran yeah, was, exactly. Yeah, thinking that or saying that. And then it, it kind of made that connection with the Mad King. And uh, he started saying it himself. And I think, well, I mean, I don't know if I want to like spoil the, <laughs> the theory. I mean, like it's really cool to just read through it all and then get to the ending. Um, but if you want me to tell you like, like the main ending of what Bran will do, 
Yeah, that, I mean that's that's fine if you want to go ahead and do that, and then you could just if you if you want you could send me the source uh, via email, and because we'll, what I'll do too is we'll probably you know of course we're recording this so we'll put the audio on the podcast, but I'll also write an article and incorporate this in there. So okay. you know so we'll, we'll touch base with content entirely if you want to go ahead and do that. Okay, cool. Yeah. So we'll basically what Brand will do is the same thing that. His dad told him or taught him during that first scene when um, they were beheading the the deserter from the Night's Watch, that the first guy who saw the White Walkers. Um, and he told him that, well, basically he has to look at the person in the eyes before he kills them. He has to be the one to swing the sword. And, you know, he has to hear the last words that that person has to say. And all of these things that Ned taught him are the things that are going to come and play out again with Fran when he realizes that he is the one who has to kill everyone in King's Landing. <laughs> yeah. So, and the thing is, and it's really, really mind blowing. And I don't know if I can do it justice the way this guy explained it, but um, he, like, Bran will essentially work into a dragon, right? Mm. And then which is something that a lot of people are expecting and really looking forward to seeing. And then he will, um, the light, hmm, light bringer, the sword, will be the dragon shooting fire. Because that's, if you've seen how they shot, like how they always shoot fire or, or breathe fire, I guess I should say, uh, especially during the, the capture of white in season seven, yes. the fire does actually look like a sword. Um, huh. so, yeah, so imagine just a dragon breathing fire in King's Landing. Kind of looks like a fiery sword. And then Bran would, as his dad taught him, would work into everyone's minds all at once wow. and feel what they're feeling and basically hear their last words as he's killing them. And he's not going to kill them, obviously, because he wants to. He's going to kill them because he has to. Like Ned had to. It's his responsibility. And it's to save everyone because... You know, they're going to turn into whites. There's just, there's probably not going to be, we're probably going to get to that situation where all of the people in King's Landing, as it was set up in season seven, when John asked Tyrion how many people there were there, and when John told Cersei, this is the fate of everyone in King's Landing if we don't do something, it's been foreshadowed that everyone in King's Landing is going to, you know, uh, turn into whites at some point or, or have that possibility. And like they're not going to be able to do anything about it. I'm sure they'll save as many people as possible, but there's going to be, yeah, people have to, <laughs> they have to clean up that place. That's a, I mean, that's a pretty intense theory, and I, I like where it's going. And you know, it's probably because that would be very climactic. Cli- oh my goodness, can't speak climactic. Um, so I, I, I think that's actually a pretty good theory. Yeah, I definitely said it to me because I definitely want to read some more of that so I can really get into that. And I'll leave it for, yeah. you know, the listeners and the watchers here of that. But what did you, uh, you know, what did you think about the fact that um, there is a reunion that's going to happen, but there, HBO is not going to put it on HBO. You have to buy the box set for oh. the reunion. Did you I hear was actually reading about that. Yeah. What, what, did you oh. hear about Did you hear about this? No, I hadn't heard of that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, allegedly there's a reunion. They were shooting it. Um, and there's no details as far as who is all involved in the reunion, but they're not going to put it on HBO. They're actually going to put it in the box set that you have to buy. What do you, what, <laughs> what do you think about that? I mean, cause that's, that a reunion is really fan service, you know, like everybody just wants to yeah. see them come back and everybody interact with one another and talk about stuff. And now you have to go pay however much it is for a box set just to see the reunion. Yeah. yeah that, I mean, well, business has got to do what business has got to do, I guess. I mean, they want to milk the cow of Game of Thrones. But I do hope that they at least post some clips from it on YouTube, kind of as a tease, and then let people see some of it. And then, you know, if you want to watch the whole thing, you have to pay for it, I guess. But, yeah, because, I mean, they do sometimes upload behind-the-scenes interviews on YouTube. So yes. I'm hoping they do something like that. Mm-hmm. Awesome. What are yeah. you... What else... Um, like... You know, what do you want to tell us about Game of Thrones um, that we might not have asked you about that you would like to share and everything? Mm, let's see. Um, oh, man. 
<laughs> putting you on putting you on the spot. Yeah. Um like there's a there's a lot to talk about. Uh I mean we could go on for hours about Game of Thrones. Uh of course. Well, you know, we try to if you want you can summarize it and then if we feel you know, if you want to, we can have you back on again. That'd be awesome. And then we can get more in depth with it too if you'd like. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, I think we're going to get the the ending of Game of Thrones. Like, no one's going to be, it's not going to please everyone. It's obviously going to be good for some people and bad for some other people. Um, we will see a lot of main characters die. I'm sure of that. And actually, one of the things I want to see in the end, which is not a very popular opinion, is Sansa as queen. Really? Um, oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, don't, I understand why people don't like it, but I just, I also think the foreshadowing is there. Uh, they've been building her up for something. I mean, her plot's got to go somewhere important. She can't just, I mean, I think like staying at Winterfell as like the queen at Winterfell. I don't think that's going to be for her. I do think, even though she has strong ties to her home, in the north, I think she would do a lot better, and she would be a better queen in King's Land than in King's Landing than than Danny. And this might also mean that Danny might actually end up dying. You know, no, I mean that's on the table, right? Well, anybody's on the table, right? Um, yeah, yeah. But the biggest question is like John and Danny: will they survive? Will they die? I mean, you know, it's possible. Danny has to have her child. So that's one thing for sure that's going to happen. So there's going to be an heir. Um, Sansa could raise this kid. Sansa could raise it. What if Daenerys is the only one that dies? Hear this out. But John lives, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Maybe he boards back into his, his uh, dire wolf again. Because uh, I don't think his, his dire wolf died, right? I forget the name. It's escaping me at the moment. Um, uh, ghost. Yeah. Ghost. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so he more than the ghost last time he was killed, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. so, if he's able to do that again, if it comes down to it, where he's gonna seems like he's gonna die again, but Daenerys dies for sure, and mm-hmm. then he stays alive, but doesn't want to have the throne, but has okay. Sansa help raise the child, I guess, and she sits on the throne and unites the Seven Kingdoms. Mm-hmm. Actually, well, that kind of um, relates to what we saw in Lord of the Rings. Which, you know, George R. R. Martin has said that he uh, got inspired by Lord of the Rings, the ending of Lord of the Rings, how it was bittersweet and how the hero in Lord of the Rings, who was Frodo, uh, you know, which just wasn't the same ever again by the end of it. You know, like he did accomplish what he had to accomplish, but he had to leave because he was just not not all there anymore. Um, so that that actually, yeah, it sounds a lot like that. Um, so John boarding into Ghost and just leaving going somewhere else you know i don't know it could happen for sure um yeah but also aria would be another one that i could definitely see especially in the books um more getting to her wolf and just staying there well that's just so wild she yeah but she's you know she would do well as the general of sansa's army yes right actually yeah no that's definitely a great point that's another thing that i really want to see it's uh sansa's queen's guard yeah exactly yeah, because you know we, I although it's kind of hard to believe because you know in real life her stature is kind of short, you know, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. so <laughs> you know, but she plays this larger than life character on screen, which is great. Mm-hmm. I like her character, but it's yeah. it's great to see how her character has evolved because I honestly thought that she wasn't going to be around now, you know, originally, um, but she she is, and she's really coming to her own as a character and is really badass you know <laughs> so so if if Sansa did get to sit on the throne it would make sense that Arya would be her queen's guard so that would be awesome yeah definitely and we've already seen that sort of happen again when she was her executioner you know mm-hmm. when she killed Littlefinger for Sansa Sansa gave the order and she did it and yeah it's just it's lined up perfectly and we could definitely see Brienne as the um the Lord Commander. Hmm. Oh, oh, yeah. Please, sorry. Oh, yeah. Re- Actually, I mean, yeah, with the, the video the video that I'm just going to be uploading tomorrow, we're, we're talking about that, me and Chris from Smokescreen. Okay. Yeah. 
great. Well, I don't, want, I don't want to uh, mm-hmm. jump into that. We'll, we'll let we'll let the fans uh, watch that on there. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, do you do you have anything else you'd want to share with us, or or any questions uh, for us at all? Mm. Well, I mean, <laughs> um, yeah. I don't, well, have you guys heard about the Golden Company attacking Winterfell? No, I haven't. I mean, that would make sense, right? Because of Cersei, but I have not heard I, about that. Well, I mean, if if you think it, it makes sense, that's the, that's the thing. It's, does it make sense? Because Cersei said that he would leave them alone and let the Whites kill everyone mm-hmm. and uh, and then just deal with whoever was left. So why is Cersei now attacking early? It's uh, it, There's been rumors that that's going to happen, and I've been trying to figure out who, why. What? Well, well, after you, you know, for, I mean, I'm very basic with what uh, I come to analyze when it comes to these theories. But I, I would think, from maybe a war standpoint, you know, there is the possibility that they don't die, and now you have that enemy that mm-hmm. can definitely be a viable or a um, a force to be reckoned with. Mm-hmm. You know. To attack her, and she's her her kingdom is dwindled quite significantly. You know, she's she's made enemies of almost everybody, and there's really not very many people that are loyal to her. So the best thing to do would to crush your enemies before they have a chance to crush you, and the off chance that they would survive. So to me, uh, I come from a military background. I would say, okay, well that doesn't make sense because you would just let the White Walkers deal with it, but. Honestly, I would say, well, no, because in the off chance that they would win, you want to strike first, get them, take care of them, get them out of the way, and then deal with the bigger threat as opposed to, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the interesting question, right? It's just something that I really want to see um, how the writers kind of figure that out. Um, well, the other thing that I would like to ask you guys is, what is your honest opinion on the writing? Um, has it bothered you at all? Have you been able to just enjoy the show like every other season? Personally, I've been able to enjoy the show, although some of the writing to me hasn't been that great. Um, like, for example, uh, what's his name? Uh, when you had the interaction between Arya and the singer, what's his name? He's got red hair oh, like yes. me. <laughs> yeah, Ed Sheeran. <laughs> Ed Sheeran, right? Yeah, sure. Like I feel like there was there was something you know building a little bit there, and they didn't see it through. And there's just quite a few storylines where I felt like there could have been more. Um, all the all the terminology and the names are escaping me right now. Um, but where was Cersei's daughter? She was at where was she at before she died? Um, she was the Sand Dorn. Snakes. With the, with, yeah, with the Sand Snakes, right? So yeah, with the sand snakes. I felt like. They could have done a lot more with that for sure, because the sand snakes are pretty cool. To be honest, yeah. like you know, they not only did they have power of seduction, but they're really good warriors too. And I mm-hmm. feel like you know maybe she, they could have somehow joined Daenerys, you know, things like that. Like, but they, but it, again, it does do uh, justice to have Cersei get a hold of them right yeah. at the end. And then have the mud, which was more trauma, more traumatizing, to be able to capture your enemy, and then mm-hmm. watch your daughter die right in front of your eyes, <laughs> yeah, before you do, and get you know what I mean. So yeah. I would have, li- I just would have liked to before that lead up. I just would have liked to have seen more of that storyline as well, you know. Um, so that just just a few things like that that I felt like they. They could have done more too, but overall, it's not too bad to me. I kind of liked it, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I don't know if you guys agree that the first time you watch it, it's like really good, and then you kind of start thinking about it a bit more after the episode is done, and then you like read social media and see like, <laughs> oh, well, yeah, these people are right. It wasn't that great. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it, really it, disappointed right now. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, you can't. At the end of the day, you can't please everybody because if you go around trying to please everybody, then it's not really going to be as good. And I, I can agree with the consensus that it could be better for sure. 
you know. Um, but again, a lot of times you have people that are really deep into the books, right? Yeah. And then they watch the show and they're like, you know, this doesn't, this doesn't uh, correlate with what the book is saying or what I had imagined things, you know, just like the, even the characters playing the parts people had a problem with because they felt like it didn't match, you know, the art on the, on the books. It didn't match yeah. with how they were fully described per se. Things like that. So, you know, people are always going to get upset. And I, I think they could have done better for sure. Um, but they try to pack so much into one hour. And sometimes they didn't even give us an hour, which that upset me. That upset me. <laughs> right? So, like, a couple of yeah. last few seasons, like, I felt like they could have done at least two more episodes per season. Oh, yes. You know, this this last season, they're only giving us, what, seven, if I'm not mistaken? I'll say six or seven episodes, right? It's going to be shorter than the rest. Yes, yes. Although the director, they confirmed that every episode, I think, is going to be over an hour. Like, they are for sure, for sure over an hour this time. So hopefully that's true. And and that's fine. But I wish they would have been, you know, I, I that'd be awesome if they could have just done like a two hour, like one yeah. more episode, like the last episode would be like two hours long. And really get into it, but yeah, even the first and last episode a little bit longer to give you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and definitely. What do you think? What are your thoughts on the writing of Game of Thrones? Have you read? You've read the books, correct? Yes. So, mm-hmm. how do you feel they did with relation to the books? And in your mind, how do you feel about the series overall? Um. Well, that like I was saying, I I really enjoy the episodes right as I watch them Um, and then later on people help me realize the mistakes here and there that the writers made made. Um, so if it was just up to me I'd still be enjoying the show I did uh, like every now and then I do notice it right away it's just the characters it's it's like the writers and I mean I understand they're a bit rushed you know they don't have a lot of time to to spend on this especially not as much as the author does on the books Um, so they have taken they seem to have taken a bit of an easy road and try to interpret the characters in their own way, not really how they were in the books. So the characters, a lot of the characters have changed personalities a little bit, which makes sense because of the influence. There's different influences in the first few seasons. It was a lot of stuff based on what the George R. R. Martin wrote in the books. And after he stopped working with them, it's become a lot more of like their David and Dan's interpretation. And so, yes, uh, you do notice the changes. So you kind of, in order to to enjoy it, you just have to, you know, separate the books from the show for sure, and just realize that the show is its own thing, and uh, enjoy it for what it is. And that's that's hard for people to detach from that, you know. Yeah. And that is true. How they took multiple personalities, where you would normally see that character itself, but they mushed them into, you know, multiple characters on the show. And you're mm-hmm. like, wait a minute, that was. This person's storyline, right? Like you would even have, um, let's say, for example, you're on Greyjoy. You would have some of his stuff that he should have been doing, but they put it in somebody else's. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So there's all these different things. So I can understand where fans would be upset about that. But overall, you know, I, I do like the show. And if you can separate the two, you know, the yeah. books from the show, then I, I think you can get along with it. So I like it. Yeah, yeah. I would recommend to any show watchers hey, read the books after you've watched the show. I think it's better after. Um, and just, yeah, enjoy the two different experiences and anyone watching the show and expecting it to, to be bad, just kind of, you know, relax a little bit and just <laughs> try to enjoy it. You know, try to, try to, you know, just don't, don't, don't judge it too much. <laughs> awesome. Well, I guess we'll go ahead and end it there. We'll let you get back to, uh, you know, life and everything. I really appreciate you coming on. And we'll have this up. Uh, I'll, I'll email you, let you know when we have it edited. There's not a whole lot to edit. And we'll have it and put it up on our YouTube channel. We'll make sure to, you know, let people know where to find you as well on social media and your YouTube channel. Um, so people can find you and, and really dive into the more deeper side of Game of Thrones because we just barely even scratched the surface here, you know. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, yes. Um, I will just say, like, for the people, if you check out my channel, like, be careful with the spoilers. But uh, other than that, yeah, I mean, thank you guys so much for inviting me, though. This was this was great. It was fun. And uh, yeah. yeah, we can definitely do another one in the future if you want. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, and I will 
link to your stuff as well from, from my pages. Awesome. And, yeah. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much, Val. I really appreciate it. And we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye.